Hi, my name is Dr. Ed Owen, and I am Professor of Tuba and Euphonium at Arkansas State University in Jonesboro. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about some of the fundamentals of tuba and euphonium performance. Many of these things you've probably heard uh, this year, but I'd like to try to reinforce uh, some of these because they are very important as you progress uh, throughout the years. In this video, we're going to be talking about posture and holding position, breathing, proper embouchure formation and buzzing, articulation, as well as some simple tools to help you in your practice sessions and some basic maintenance procedures. So let's get started with posture and holding position. We know that it takes a lot of wind to play the tuba or euphonium, and good posture is essential to the efficient movement of wind. So we begin by making sure that we're standing from our waist up. You could do this by just you know, standing up and sit down and make sure that you're standing from your waist up. And if at all possible, you want to keep your knees below your hips. Most of you probably could sit in a regular chair and that's not going to be a problem. As you grow, you may have to adjust that or make sure that you're sitting in a taller chair, but you want to make sure that your knees are below your hips. It allows you to breathe a little bit better. And then basically what we want to do is to bring the horn to us. Once we're standing from the waist up, we find a way to bring the horn to us so that we're not having to make any kind of compromise to go to the horn by scrunching down this way or reaching up to the horn or moving side to side uh, to, uh, to reach the horn. So uh, as far as euphonium goes, um, if you have a euphonium that's like this with four valves, uh, three or four valves up top, I'm going to talk generally about how we're going to uh, hold this instrument. Um, you want to cradle the instrument, kind of like uh, sometimes I think of cradling it like a baby. I'm going to take my left arm, I'm going to wrap around the front of the horn. Usually there's a little bit of a, there's a brace here on your third valve uh, slide that you can place your thumb on. And you're just, you're holding the entire weight of the horn with your left arm, okay? Now, many of you might be able to put the horn uh, in, in your lap. But as again, as you grow, that's going to change. So make sure that you remember to bring the horn to you. Some people will roll up a towel and put it in their lap. Okay, I pretty much have to hold this horn up this way. But again, we want to hold the entire weight of the horn with our left hand. Your right hand, if you want to think of holding uh, a softball or an orange, something like that, so that your fingers are curved, you're going to place your fingers on top of the valves right in the middle of that valve button. And again, you want to have curved fingers. If you have curved fingers, the path of your finger tends to be straight. If your fingers are flat, the path of your finger tends to be curved and it'll pull uh, the valves back and they will tend to stick. On tuba, the mouthpiece needs to be level uh, with your mouth. Now, um, there are all kinds of uh, different tubas and euphoniums, so you have to adjust this to um, your particular horn and your particular size. So it's very important that you take time to make sure that you're doing this correctly. Um, again, you want to make sure that the mouthpiece is level with your, with your mouth. Now, I place the horn in my lap, and the horn is right there where it needs to be. Okay. Sometimes you can sit diagonally on the, on the chair and put the horn on the corner of the chair, but you can see that that's not going to be good for me because the mouthpiece is way down here, okay? Um, if the horn tends to slip on the chair, one thing that you can put on there is some rubberized shelf liner, and that will keep the horn uh, from, uh, uh, from moving on, on the chair. Um, some people will use a tuba stand similar to, to this that just holds the bottom bow of the instrument and you can adjust the height of that. You just need to spend some time making sure that the, that the height, either you have to raise or lower yourself or raise or lower the horn and maybe a combination of both uh, to make sure that that mouthpiece is right uh, where it needs to be, where it's like parallel with uh, your uh, with your mouth. It must, must be level uh, with your mouth, okay? Um, 
If at all possible, if you have a horn like this, I would say you want to put your left hand over the top and, and go ahead and put it on the first valve slide. Um, your, your, again, your fingers, just like euphonium, need to be curved. If your fingers are flat, that's really not good uh, technique. If you have a horn like this with rotor valves, you want your fingers to be as far uh, out on the paddle as, as possible without slipping off. Okay? The closer in you go, the harder they are to press down. Okay, now moving on to uh, breathing. Again, this is a very, uh, very important uh, thing that we need to uh, that we need to establish. Really good breathing technique early on. Your inhalation and exhalation must be free of excessive tension. Okay, and the syllable that I like to use or like to think of uh, when I'm inhaling and exhaling is O, an O vowel. Okay, so O in and O out, like that. Okay, when I do breathing exercises, regardless of, of what, what I'm doing, I, I might place one hand on my belly and one hand on my upper chest to make sure that I am expanding in, in both areas. A lot of times we'll just breathe up high and not expand down low. Okay, so we need to make sure we're expanding all around. There's all kinds of things that we can talk about with that, but the main thing that you need to remember is to think that OH vowel, keep your teeth apart and your tongue down so that your throat is nice and open, okay? And that, that will allow you to um, move the, the most amount of wind in the shortest amount of time possible, okay? One of the things that I use uh, when I do my breathing exercises is a breathing tube. Now, this is just a piece of uh, plastic, uh, soft plastic tubing that I can put in my mouth, in between my teeth, and wrap my lips around, and I'm able to inhale and exhale that way. And it just encourages me uh, in the proper technique of breathing. You can also just go to a hardware store and get a, get a piece of PVC uh, pipe like this. Uh, I think this is about three quarter inch uh, piping, um, and that's really good for that as well. It just encourages you to keep your lips apart, obviously when you breathe, lips, teeth, tongue, throat. Those are four places that, uh, that can restrict the flow of wind. So you wanna make sure that those are, uh, everything is nice and open, okay? One of the things that I talk about uh, a lot in clinics that I give uh, is fuel tank, fuel line, and engine. Fuel tank is your lungs. You want to have a full fuel tank. You want to have an open fuel line, which is everything from the top of your lungs, your throat, and to your lips. And with your lips, your embouchure, that's the engine. We want to have a full fuel tank, an open fuel line, and whatever your favorite uh, race car or sports car is, we want to have that kind of an engine. Okay, now moving to embouchure formation. This is very, very important because the embouchure is the source of the quality of the sound, okay? This is where it all starts. If you have bad embouchure, you're going to have a bad sound. If you have a good embouchure, then you have a great potential to have a great sound. When I talk about forming the embouchure, I try to keep this as simple as possible because we don't need to be thinking about all the muscles and everything that's, that's in our face. What I simply do is I take my right arm out in front of me, my finger, my index finger extended, down, so out and down just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is blow to the tip of my finger. I'm going to pretend like this is a candle, it has a flame, and I'm going to blow to that flame and make it flicker, but not go out. I'm not going to blow it out, just make it flicker. So I'm going to take a good breath, OH vowel again. And if I blow to make that flicker but not go out, that is almost uh, it's just a perfect way to form uh, the embouchure, okay? Now, obviously I wasn't buzzing then, but essentially what you have to do then is just increase the amount of wind that you're blowing and shrink the hole in your lips and your lips will buzz. And we wanna make sure that we're thinking as round as possible on the hole. The, the aperture, which is the hole in our lips, that the aperture is the hole in, in the embouchure. It really looks more like a football, but we wanna to try to think as round as possible. And one of the things that I do to, to encourage that is to use a drinking straw. Now, 
if I were to uh, hold the drinking straw in my in my right hand, okay, I always hold the I hold, always hold the mouthpiece in my left hand. Two fingers and a thumb on the throat of the mouthpiece, okay. We well, have good control of it, but I'm probably not going to jam it into my face. So two fingers and a thumb on the shank of uh, excuse me on the on the throat of the mouthpiece. Now what I'm going to do is take a big breath in. I'm going to place the straw in my mouth. I'm going to blow through the straw. I'm going to place the mouthpiece over the straw and onto my face. I'm going to keep blowing and I'm going to pull that straw out and there will be a buzz. One more time. Okay, so that's a very easy thing for you to do. Uh, as well, I have a former student that still does that. Just takes a take it takes a drinking straw and just blows through it a little bit, just to remind himself of that round aperture. Okay, we want that aperture to be as round as possible. Round aperture, round sound. Thin aperture, thin sound. Okay, so if I'm buzzing like this, that's going to sound pretty good. I'm buzzing like this, not going to sound good when we amplify that on the horn. I'll, I'll demonstrate on the horn. So if I were to buzz a B flat, that's your second line B flat. That's a resonant, free sounding buzz. Okay. If I were to put that into the horn, gives me a good sound. If I were to pinch up and down and play with a thin aperture, you hear the difference in that sound? It's not near as free uh, sounding and resonant. Okay, so we want to keep as resonant a buzz as possible. Some of the common problems that I see with younger players is that like pinching up and down. Also the puffed out cheeks, which we talked about, you don't have to puff your cheeks to play the tuba. So you want to make sure that you keep a good focus to your embouchure. Again, the drinking straw can help that uh, as well. Excessive smile is another one. If your corners are pulled back like this, that's not going to sound good uh, at all. So you want to make sure again, that they're, that they're forward. Just remind yourself, you do this, so put your, put a mirror on your stand and use the drinking straw blow to your finger just to remind yourself that embouchure formation make sure that you're keeping things as round as possible okay next is articulation we use our tongue to clearly define the beginning of the note if i were to start a note with just the wind like this that note is not very clear. It's a little fuzzy. Now I can work on that to where it's a, a little bit cleaner, okay? But the easiest way to clean up the beginning of that, uh, of the, of the, of that note is to articulate with our tongue. And the articulation syllable that I like to use is toe. If I want to be a little bit more legato, I'll use do. It's okay to use ta or da. My preference is toe and do. It just seems a, a lot easier for tuba players, uh, particularly in, in the register that you're playing right now, to inhale on O and exhale TO or DO. So that's why I recommend TO. And I write it with a little T and a big OH because we just want to think of one taste bud on the end of our tongue touching up behind our top teeth. It's just exactly where uh, it would be if you say, my toe hurts, my toe hurts. So if you say that, just think about where your, where your tongue is touching, toe. It's right there, okay, right behind your top teeth. No big deal. All right, um, some of the common problems that I see in, in younger players, one is tonguing in between the teeth, okay, which would be thu or tho, and that would sound like this. Okay, now the correct way to articulate Toe, toe, toe is like this. Okay, 
okay? Surely you can hear the difference uh, in those. If you, if you use foo or tho, where you're tonguing in between the teeth, you're actually touching the vibrating mechanism, which is your lips, and you will never be able to play a beautiful uh, legato. So make sure that you're not tonguing in between your lips. And the other thing is moving your jaw too much when you tongue, okay? So we don't want to, 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 but we want to, 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 okay? So keep your jaw still. No, too much jaw movement, right? Okay, so I'm going to keep that nice and legato when it's required. Uh, I'm just thinking of toe or do again, a little T, big O H, or a little D, big O H. Um, okay, so tongue in between the teeth, jaw movement with the tongue. That's pretty much all that uh, I've. I've I normally find with with younger players there are some other things but those are the main two that you want to that you want to watch out for all right the last two things very briefly some recommended tools to help you in your uh, practice sessions uh, number one you need a metronome and a tuner Okay, now there are lots of metronomes and tuners out there there's the tonal energy app that you can have on your phone uh, there is a Korg uh, TM50, I believe now, is the one uh, that, is, that is out there. Those are very good uh, tuners. They hear tuba uh, really well. The Tonal Energy app hears tuba very well uh, as, as well. If you're going to use an app on your phone, I just recommend that you put your phone on airplane mode so that it, you can practice without distraction. So you need a, a metronome and a tuner, your metronome needs to be capable of subdividing, okay? And if possible, um, have a digital recorder. Now, again, you can use your phone to record yourself. It's nice if you have something that you can uh, record yourself and play back half speed, because that's like a microscope for your ears, and you can really, really hear things, particularly if you can have it play back at the same pitch. If you play it back half speed and it goes down an octave, that's really not very helpful uh, at all. And then also a mirror. Uh, you can get a, a mirror, uh, a locker mirror from the dollar store. Uh, put that on uh, your stands. You can see things like I talked er earlier with the puffing of your cheeks. Uh, it's a really good thing to have. And then also a breathing tube. I use a breathing tube almost every day when I do my breathing exercises just to remind myself how I'm breathing uh, to play the tuba or euphonium because that's just not the way that we breathe normally. Okay, we breathe differently when we play a wind instrument. And then lastly, some recommended maintenance procedures. It's very, very important that we keep our, our instrument properly maintained so that we can play properly. And it starts with these two very important things that have nothing to do with the horn. Okay, brush and floss your teeth and keep your mouthpiece clean. Okay, if you can get a mouthpiece brush uh, you get a, get a, a, a maintenance kit. Uh, most all of them will have a mouthpiece brush. You wash your mouthpiece uh, out with uh, soap and water. You got to keep that thing clean. Brush and floss your teeth as well. If you can keep those foreign objects from your mouth getting into your horn, that's a very good thing. So brush and floss your teeth and keep your mouthpiece clean. Oil your piston valves daily, only on the days that you eat. Right? Okay. Dr. Suzuki says you should only practice on the days that you eat. You should only oil your valves on the days that you practice. So every day. Okay. Um, if you happen to have a rotary valve horn, you can oil those uh, top valve, the, the top spindles and the bottom spindles at least a couple of times a week. If you want to do it daily, that's, that's great. Uh, and then oiling the rotary valve linkage uh, weekly. I like to think of maintenance Monday or mouthpiece Monday and slidey Friday. You need to keep those uh, slides moving. So every Friday, make sure all your valve slides move, your main slide moves, and if it doesn't move, replace uh, the grease that you've put on, on there, okay? Um, and that probably needs to be replaced once uh, a month anyway. Wipe off the old, put on new. And then you can clean the, the body of the horn, the outside of the horn, as, as needed. If you have excess oil or, or grease, it just attracts dirt, and that's not uh, very good. 
Well, we've come to the end of my presentation. I think um, I, I, I trust that you've uh, been reminded of some things and that these things uh, will help you in your development as a tuba or euphonium player. And band directors, if you have any questions about anything tuba and euphonium related, I'm happy to, to answer those questions. Uh, you can reach me at eowen at astate.edu. Thanks so much. Have a great summer.